So I want to talk to you guys about an event that happened in my garage the other day. I was working on my gravity flyer and I changed the fields. So what I did was my Tesla coil and testing was showing that there was a spot in the Tesla coil itself that wouldn't allow me to use the microphone next to it. It just died out. And I showed that in the testing that I was doing. It seems like a strange anomaly. Well, it got even stranger. So I went ahead and took this thing and I kept thinking to myself, this field is backwards. This field is backwards. It's got to be backwards. It's because I use static volts a lot to build things. I understand how they work and how they expand and contract and do things like that. So in the center of our gravity flyer, I was using static volts on the two plates. But then we used a Tesla coil for the field on the outside. It just seemed like it was wrong the whole time. So what I did was I changed the fields. I put the Tesla coil to the inside and I changed the static volts to the outside. Now, I just ran a wire that goes basically from the top disc through the Tesla coil and then to the bottom disc. That's it. So basically it'll pick up two separate frequencies in there, one from the number one coil and the number two, and it'll pick up the upper one from the top. It, so it changed the frequency going into it. Now, as many of you have seen my videos, you'd notice that my motors that I use are fan motors. They're not the regular motors. And the reason for that is the regular motors power through the first, uh, I don't know, 300 RPM like it's nothing and it doesn't stop and slow down. My lower disc barely gets to 380. It, it, it's pushing close to the max voltage to get there. And any interference from the bottom uh, brush stops it or slows it down. So it, it's really hard to get it up to that and still have some contact on there because it'll stop it entirely. The upper one does fine, except for when it's too hard pressed on that as well, it'll stop. Now. The wires that I use are very thin. They're telephone cable wires is basically what they are. It's the same thing Alexa uses. Well, there's a lot of leakage in those wires. They're susceptible to a lot of fields. Now I say this because at least you have some parameters of what's going on. The bottom disc that I'm running on this is about 350 to 380 RPM. Okay. The top disc, it's about 800. We're not going super fast here. It's really slow. So the hertz that come out of it are really low and they get close to 50 hertz. So take it for what you will. Maybe your test shows something different, but the interference I got is proving out that what's going on. So let me explain a little bit more about what I had. So when you change the static field to the outside and the inside of the Tesla coil, if the frequencies are lined up in any way, you start to get an interference. What I had was basically an over unity event where everything in my entire garage that was metal started to spark up and it started to send my TV, everything in my computer completely out of whack. It, it just, it was like an interference wave went through the, my whole garage is what's going on here. I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. It wasn't an EMP. Some people have told me online it's EMI, okay, electromagnetic interference. And that could be very well what it is. So, but it was strange to me that I could never get the field that Alexa got until this happened. And this is the craziest part about it is, it is nasty. This field is not good to anything around it electronic at all. It starts to fry it. Because what I'm doing is, I'm taking the Tesla coil, which is a energy that basically pushes energy out, right? And I take a static field, which is basically free energy. So it, it can travel through the air and permeate the air. So what happened when I did it was, is the energy was amplifying. If you saw when I took around my, my little uh, fluorescent uh, bulb, you were starting to see the energy, it would be like real small. And when the two forces combined, it started to light up brighter than I ever could on next to my Tesla coil. It, it was just, it was strange. So when I hit it at the right frequency, what happened? The energy expanded. 
the toolbox that I usually build things on, it was lighting up, cracking and popping. And usually I put my, uh, my drivers for my motor on that. Just the basic voltage regulator there, the potentiometer. So what would happen was it was starting to spark over. It fried my upper motor. The lower motor is fine, but the upper one's fried. But then my lower motor driver fried. So everything went, was charged to it. Now this event only lasted probably about 40 seconds. If it was going any longer, my TV was going out, my computer was going out, every other piece of uh, electronics I have in here, my 3D printers behind me would have probably died. Anything that was plugged in at the time or anything that has electricity to it was going to fry. So I undid it immediately. So what does that mean? It, it, it basically is saying whatever Alexi's working on here has way more power it's tapping into than what it actually is being put into it. And I know I've said it in the past, but this, this isn't the first time that this has happened to me when working with static bolts and working with an alternate energy source with it. I've used AC flybacks and DC flybacks together and I get the same problem when I do it. The thing is, getting an oscillation frequency from my Tesla coil. And then I'm getting an oscillation coming off my flyback. Now, I don't think they're lining up at all. I, I really don't. I think the peaks are heat, hitting together is what I think is happening. They're, they're, the frequencies are so far off, they're not aligning. They're, they're, they're just not communicating with each other. However, I am driving things from the wall unit. So I am pulling 50 hertz. My TV, 50 to 60 hertz causes interference with my TV. So if you can understand this, in some way I'm tapping into one frequency and I'm amplifying it. And then in another frequency, it's amplifying the field. So you can call it anything you want. I, you know, at this point, it is what it is. It's just an event that actually produced more energy than what I put into it. Look, I, I, I'm putting 12 to 33 volts into things. I'm not putting hundreds of volts into this thing. I know that a flyback produces more volts, gets rid of the amps, and I used two flybacks. So the amps on it were like non-existent. They were in the milliamps or low, real, real low milliamps, and it were really high volts. So you could say that maybe overpowered some things. It, it, it's, it's conceivably possible that everything is going on with this thing. I just don't know what the answer is. I do know it scared the living daylights out of me. I really did not enjoy the feeling of being around it. I actually had to stop work for that day and just leave. It, it, I didn't want to even be in the same garage anymore. It, it's not a fun experience. And like I said, any longer and it would have taken out everything in my garage. Thousands and thousands of dollars of stuff would have been gone. So. Anyway, just be aware when you're doing your gravity flyer that this kind of thing can happen. This is a very weird event. And it might just be that I, I didn't take the care of putting the correct wire in from the flyback. I use the positive wire. Now, generally, when I want to create a field that pulls in, I'm using the negative wire. It could be what it is. It could be that I just, instead of creating a field around something, I created an expansion and it just blew out. So I, I don't know how to put it in physics terms to you guys. I really don't. It's just a weird event that happened. I, I don't know what to say about it. it, it <laughs> it's just not something that you come across every day. This is the third time that's happened to me. I've blown out graphics cards, TVs. I've replaced my TV three or four times working with high voltage in my garage. But nothing, nothing took this. Nothing did this. This thing... It turned off my camera at one time when I was just recording for the simple sound of things. It it really messes with electronics bad. And it just had to do with switching the field. That was it. That's all it took. It, it, it was putting the Tesla coil in the center and putting the static electricity on the outside. And what it did is it just pushed it out. Now, could, if I put the negative on the outside, would it have brought it back in and created the bubbles that I was looking for? It might have, but I don't know that it would. And I think, honestly, 
I would need to take this thing outside to set up a TV somewhere in the proximity of it and I'll know when I hit the field when that goes off. I do not think that any kind of oscilloscope or anything should be put around this because the energy is going to break it and that's just money in the trash that I don't want to do. Some old TV or something might be fine to, to just show this. But I, I don't know. Man. I don't know where to go from here. It, uh, it's creating a field that's usable now. It, it, it's, it's getting me in the level of something that would actually lift, something that would actually interfere with nature to lift something. And I, and I just don't know how far I want to push it. So, I mean, you got to understand, you start messing with this, you start messing with high voltage lines around your house. It's, it's one of those things that's going to keep going. It, it was pretty bad in the, in the short time that I had it going. So it kind of freaked me out. You know, usually I'm pretty confident when I say this. I, I No, not even close. I'm sorry. It's just, it's something that you feel you shouldn't run across. And I, I don't know how to explain it in any other way. And I don't know if it's recreatable. It, and it probably is. But the thing is, do I want to create it again? And I, I don't know that I do. Uh, at least not in my garage, not with the stuff that I have in here. I, no way. It's going to have to be outside. So where it goes from here, I don't know, guys. Uh, it, it was a truly interesting thing. And I can now see why Alexi's camera goes from a 1080p to a like 400 and something P camera because it's it, it trashes electronics and it and it brings down the ability for the camera to even get it right it was killing my camera just on the sound and then when you try to record something like that anytime I put high voltage next to something that's too close it would take the camera and distort it and make the camera actually a horrible picture it, it could be down to like 200 man it could be like old VHS watching that versus the cameras we have today and it was the same experience so I know I'm hitting into the field that he did and that part's exciting the part that's not exciting is everything going just I can't even say the words on YouTube that allow me to say what I want to say about it but it's just bad it's just bad to electronics and if you're out there and you try this please do yourself a favor do it outside. Don't do not do it inside. Do it outside. Set something up you don't care about the electronics and you'll know when you hit the field because it'll just distort it and destroy it. And make sure you have a good zoom on your camera because uh, this this part gets nasty. So take for it what you will. Try to recreate it if you want. I Like I said, don't do it in your garage. Don't do it around all your expensive stuff. It, it, it's a very, very nasty bad field. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know if I want to show this video because doing something like this gives people the wrong impression about things and they think, oh my God, you're creating more energy, so I want to do it and I want to create an over unit event. No, no, you don't. You're, you're going to get arrested for that. Trust me, they're going to come after you. It, it's just one of those things, man, that a, a proper lab would be better off running this test. Uh, you know, I don't know what else to say, guys. It just is what it is. And that's what I got. And it was building to that point as I was doing this when I was testing it out. And then it just, boom. And it was like everything was electrified. It was, everything was sparking over. It, it, it was just, you could see on the outside of the actual, uh, boxes like this right here so if i show you this there were sparks on the outside of this everywhere okay all around it not there's no metal really this is plastic the sparks on the plastic man it it freaked me out it, it's not supposed to work that way i mean i understand you know the metal you get a little spark over maybe it zaps one thing to the next you know what i mean creates a spark out but not on this not on the plastic it shouldn't do that but it did so, anyway, we'll see where it goes from here, guys. I mean, I'm up for trying things, but 
kind of got me freaked out right now. Maybe just a couple days to kind of look back on it might uh, might be good for reflection and see what I caused. Maybe uh, maybe I'll figure it out. You know, maybe I, I like I said, maybe I just put the wrong wire on it instead of captivating the field. Maybe, maybe it exploded out, and maybe that was the problem here. Maybe it needed an outer frame or something to hold it in. Maybe I was creating something, you know, that I probably shouldn't. But I'll tell you what, that plate in the center, that sucker was magnetized, man. It absolutely magnetized that plate. That is aluminum. And it was magnetized hard. It was, it, you could put a piece of metal to it and have it stick to it, no problem. It was that magnetized. It, you're not supposed to magnetize aluminum. It, it doesn't work that way. But this, it just boom. Right on that aluminum plate, man. It was magnetized. I mean, you you put something there and doom, doom, it you know, I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain it. I, I, I really don't know. So, anyway, guys, you know, maybe you guys can figure it out better than I can. Maybe you've experienced something like this. But to me, it, it was uh, it was a lot harder than most things, usually just tripping out my TV or something. When I'm magnetizing aluminum with just voltage fields, it, it's kind of a strange event. When, you, when you're taking plastic and it's sparking over on plastic, and, and I'm not talking it was like a metal sparking over to another metal and it just touched the plastic. No, it was coming out of the plastic into the plastic again. Whatever was in there that got fried, was going crazy because it was shooting the volt out of it. That's what I'm trying to say. This is not something that I would say to reproduce, but do whatever you want. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It One strange thing after another with this thing, man. If it's not one thing, it's another. And this is the strangest one yet. Anyway, like what you saw today please like share subscribe do all those fun things hopefully you guys have a better answer than i do at this point because I, i've run out of them uh, especially with this anyway thanks for watching guys bye